In the north, which was the main bone of contention, because both the NCNC and the Action Group were trying to mobilize northern minorities, what the ruling party in the north did was to deny minority parties and opposition parties in the north the right to contest in the elections. Okay. And one third of the seats in the 1964 elections were declared because they refused to allow the other candidates Okay, and I'm going, to, I'm going to have to stop you there because I'm going to have to take a short break. Um, stay with us. We are talking Biafra and nation building on the call, coming to you live from Channels Television Studios. When you say you want to be free, what does that mean in practical terms? What I mean is a total freedom. We are Biafrans. We've never been Nigeria, and we can never be. We have been marginalized. We are Biafrans. We've never been won. We don't eat the same food. We, are, we don't have the same culture. We are not the same. 1914, uh, British government came here and forced us to this unholy marriage that has refused to work. Today, all these people that you're seeing here are saying no to that. No restructuring, nothing except total freedom. Why, why you see tears on my eyes that the pains have been passing through right from the day my father told me about where I come from. Before Nandikalu, be my, my own master, come to lecture me more than what my father did. And that's why I am here. We want a freedom. And if they refuse, what my master decides is what we, we are standing for. That's referendum. There's nothing else than that. And since 1914 to date, we've not had any autochthonous, meaning we've not had any homegrown process in which people are involved in the creation of their constitution. And that's our problem. So to just go to restructuring without mm -hmm. asking some key questions, I think is fundamentally flawed. Nigeria's sovereignty is not sacrosanct. Nigeria's sovereignty is sacrosanct for those people who are eyeing 2019. They will do this, deceive us, go to 2019, pretend that uh, uh, the structure is the issue. They are now climbing on the bandwagon of popularism. It is not in the interest of Nigerians to listen to what I call the conspiracy of the elites. The conspiracy of the elites is to be found in either the APC or the PDP or whatever new party emerges for 2019. We need to look inwards and determine how best we can grow our country. And I think we can do so by asking the real questions. And it is not for nothing that Nam De Kano has sprung up from nowhere. Let us be honest. It is not for nothing. Here's a guy who no one knew suddenly springs up. Why? Because the politicians have created the space. Politicians are not on the ground. They sit in Abuja and talk, and people can relate to their own ethnicities or subnational groups. So now they cannot see there's an opportunity to take uh, over the southeast. He goes there, he finds this marginalization, unhappiness, poverty, and he jumps in. I have nothing, to, I have nothing against Namdi Khan except that he must do uh, what he's doing according to the Nigerian law. If you have a truly federal, fairer, restructured federal republic of Nigeria, that the agitation for Biafra might win. That is a counter narrative. But he also argues forcefully about the absence of leadership in Ibolan to push for this counter narrative. Uh, today, he talks about the leadership failures, and he took on very forcefully some of our uh, uh, sons who, at least in the last government, he accused of taking the slots belonging to the Igbos. And what they achieved with it was basically to <laughs> turn the billions to develop their own villages and abandon the entire Igbo land, as it were. And so this vacuum, according to him, that there is nobody, I mean, there is no leadership that actually agitates for the larger Igbos within uh, the same, you know, agitating for this fairer 
uh, neo Nigerian, uh, whatever, what I might call the neo Zikism. In other words, within the context of that, neo Zikism will represent what Aziki were lived and canvassed for. They negotiated for a new constitution, for constitutions of Nigeria. They went through a series of constitutional conferences, and Azik died a federalist. Welcome back. We are talking Biafra and nation building. And remember, if you want to be part of this conversation, you can tweet your questions and comments, and we will do our very best to make sure that we share what you say. Now, I was out, um, as uh, you saw in some of those Vox Pops in Umoa here, and I spoke to young men that I found in front of Namdi Kanu's house, and all of them were talking about leadership. And we saw some of those videos, um, Mr. Chukuma Solodo and the um, uh, lawyer, Olisa Agbagoka, talking about the failures of leadership. I did sit down with the man who the IPOB course leader and who a lot of young Easterners are now looking to, Mr. Namdi Kanu, to talk to him about his feelings about Nigeria. What does Biafra mean? It means freedom, liberty, fairness, equity and justice. In practical terms, these are very good sounding words, mm -hmm. but in practical terms, what does Biafra mean? Confederation. So, a weak center, very, weak. very strong regions. Absolutely. Have you had a change of mind, therefore, about getting an independent Biafra? Because that's what I seem to be hearing. No, I've not changed my mind, no. An independent Biafra means going back to the way we were before the white man came. Okay, so you're not talking about a federation when you say a confederation. You're not talking about a federation as part of Nigeria. You're talking about total independence. Absolute independence. Complete independence. Now, is there anything that can happen that will make you change your mind about this particular direction? No. So it is either Biafra or nothing else? Or death, yes. Or death? That's correct. If push comes to shove, yes. will you go to war? No, because truth is a far more potent and deadlier weapon than bullets and mortars. So truth. no war? You've yes. ruled out the... Absolutely, the I don't know war, no. No war. When I say Biafra ordered that I'll keep pushing. Either I am alive, I die in the process, I won't stop. Allow me to repeat, if you don't mind. Had sovereign national conference been convened by the powers that be, where every ethnic national, I said every, I don't care if there are 600, I don't, I don't care. Everyone is All the 500 plus. Everyone mm. together to say, this is all, others can delegate I don't know, uh, uh, powers to, to other people to attend on their behalf. Sit down to say, what type of country do we want? Sit down, discuss, agree. I can begin to perhaps submit to is your position. Is it too late? It is way too late. They've killed too many people. They've ruined too many lives. They've wasted too many souls. How do we bring those people back? If the federal government, given the agitation that is going on, becomes convinced that, you know what, these people have a point, um, it is time to actually address all these issues, mm -hmm. and they begin to systematically address some of these issues, would you change your mind? No, because of the deceptions of the past. No trust? No trust. Aburi was there, it was negotiated. Nothing happened. 1968, if I recall. Mm -hmm. And the CONFAB report, what became of it? How about the three R's, reconciliation, reconstruction, and heaven knows what else? What became of them? Nothing. Calabar seaport is not working. Can you tell me why it's not working? It's a seaport used by the colonial masters. Why is it not working today? How about Iguacha seaport? Why is it not being used? Why not worry? Why must we allow only Lagos to function as a viable seaport? In England, where I used to live, you had Liverpool, you had the Sun, which is Portsmouth, House Southampton, everywhere. You had um, harbors and, and, and ports. 
So why must you have only one? I've heard people say these are very valid arguments mm -hmm. and that these are things.